I really was only going to get just one watch. So then, how did this happen? Hello, my name is Tom. Some of you might know me as Bowl of Salmon on Instagram and today we're gonna have a closer look at the state of my collection. I'm a photographer and I love to travel. Together with my wife and our two kids, we try to hit the road as much as we can. I think it is important to choose watches that suit you and your lifestyle and what you feel comfortable with on the wrist. There are probably people that put way more thought into their collection. For myself, I didn't really have a plan. I just wanted to get one watch. So it was summer 2020, midst of the Covid pandemic, and influenced by some friends, the Black Bay got onto my radar. At this point in time, the Black Bay was supposed to be my one watch collection. If you want to hear more about this, I've actually done a video about that one, so I'll link to that. After acquiring the Black Bay, I started the Instagram account. Instead of harassing my friends via WhatsApp, I started posting under this weird Instagram handle. When I was at my AD to pick up my Black Bay, I asked if I could try on the Speedmaster and, well, that was a mistake. I remember seeing that weird and wonderful side profile for the first time. The case flanks, the twisted lugs, the domed sapphire. The Speedmaster was probably the only watch I actually knew something about. And with my real birthday still a couple of months away, I couldn't get this watch out of my head. So the next couple of months were spent on harassing people on Instagram, with them really helping me choose between a Hesalite or the Sapphire version. To make things more complicated, rumors of a new Speedmaster grew stronger. But the new specs and the price leaked just in time and I made the decision to still opt for the soon to be discontinued 1861 and I chose the Hesalite version. The Seiko actually joined between the Black Bay and the Speedmaster. It was announced earlier that year, and it's one of those pieces you easily fall for. I thought I would never dare to take more expensive watches camping with me. And while we all want to add stories to our timepieces, well, everybody needs to decide for himself what he feels comfortable with. So the SPB joined as my dual everyday beater. The thing I like most about watches is a good story. And of all the watches in the Rolex catalog, the story of the Explorer had the biggest pull on me. But at the same time, I was afraid that due to its shiny nature, I wouldn't be able to enjoy it. Now Rolex has another adventure watch in the lineup, and the Explorer 2 ticked all the boxes. So far my collection existed of modern tool and dive watches, so I started to explore some more vintage pieces. It's the beautiful images from Max on Instagram that made me look into this piece. And when a vintage Omega Constellation in mint condition popped up online, I couldn't resist. A year after starting the Instagram account, I reached out to Richard from Studio Underdog to get hands-on with a couple of his watches. The Mint Chuck was also my first watch-related printed publication. And yes, I'm proud of that. The Oris Hodinki Diver 65 was released in the summer of 21. I remember seeing the promo video and I really fell in love with that piece. It was my version of the Explorer, a solid dual tool and field watch with vintage vibes. But like all Hodink collaborations, it sold out pretty quickly. And it wasn't before March 2022 that I was finally able to acquire one. So these are the watches that I consider part of the core collection. Let's see how I feel about them now and how much wrist time they get. I stand behind every positive thing I said about the Black Bay, but maybe my collection has outgrown the purpose of why I decided on adding this piece in the first place. I keep going back and forth on the Black Bay. It's spending way too much time in the watch box because I'll grab the other ones more. And when I do put it on the wrist, I just fall in love again because it's such a gorgeous piece. So what's the problem? I don't see this as a diver. I think that because of the gilt accents, I don't enjoy this watch as an outdoor piece. Sometimes it feels too dressy, but it is not a dress watch either. So I've been dressing it up with this Jubilee bracelet, and the watch has found a bit of a second life now. When I occasionally do have to dress up, my Speedy is actually my go-to piece. This is the watch that I pick for family occasions, events, dinners, and well, we all wear this on a Tuesday, right? The Speedmaster is a special piece for me. On the day of picking up my watch, my two sons both gave me 10 euros of their own pocket money to chip in with the watch purchase. The Speedy isn't my most worn piece either, but it's a classic and it sits well in every collection. I spent all of last summer with this one on the wrist, and I didn't regret a single minute of it. I love the size, the simple looks, the sunburst grey dial. 
It's built like a tank and it's a total strap monster. Also, if I could make a perfect Submariner, I would slap this bezel on it. Aligned to Rolex standards, of course. It is the best watch in this price range. And after the Tudor Black Bay, the best value for money in my collection. If it wasn't for the Explorer and the Oris, this would take up all the adventure time. It is the watch in the collection where I am 100% carefree when I wear it, both in terms of considering the value on my wrist or drawing unnecessary attention. So this was my first vintage buy. Mint condition, a gorgeous dial, and at 35mm, it just feels way too small on my wrist. But it turns out that Mrs. Salmon finally found a watch in my watch box she actually likes wearing. So all I need to do is try and find a way to sell this one without her finding out. On days where I just want a pop of color on the wrist, I'll pick this one. It just manages to make me smile every time. It feels perfect on the wrist. Thanks to the movement, it has the correct amount of heft. I love the quirky dial. It has color, but it still doesn't feel like it's too much, and I love the case shape. One year in and I'm still freaked over the fact that I own this watch. Such an enjoyable piece with the most legible dial. At 42mm, the biggest watch in my collection, but it sits so good on the wrist. Maybe I treated this one too much as a safe queen the first months, but I'm more than making up for that. Going on camp trips with this one on the steel bracelet feels a bit weird, like it's a bit too much flex. But lately I discovered I can dress it down and equally enjoy this piece on a grey NATO. It makes it less of an eye catcher and without the bracelet there are less parts to scuff up. This watch easily gets the most wrist time in my collection. The Oris is the smallest tool watch in my collection. It's a 38mm Diver 65 with a vintage inspired bracelet tapering from 19mm to 14mm which makes the bracelet feel so enjoyable on the wrist. At first sight, it is perhaps the most boring looking watch in my collection, but that's what I like about it so much. At first it felt weird to go back and forth between this and the Explorer because of the size difference, but I'm happy to say that I'm equally enjoying both sizes now. Depending on the light, the dial goes from a muted green to a grey or even black. It has the caliper 400 movement with a power reserve of 5 days. So when I have been wearing other watches for 3-4 days, I'm still able to get this one out of the watch box without having to set the time. This limited edition Oris Odinki collaboration is almost on par for wrist time with the Explorer and could possibly be my favorite in the collection. So from the idea of just one watch to this in two years has been unexpected. So what's next? I can't predict anything. New tool, field and dive releases always seem to draw me in. But I would really love to diversify a bit more. In the long term there are some classic designs that I would love to add. The Navitimer impressed me, a white Cartier Santos, a 5 digit GMT and the love for that Monaco still lingers. I do have my name down to perhaps the most quirky watch in the Rolex catalog. One that I can't get out of my head. One that is sure to shake up the watch box a bit. And I do hope I can make a video about that one soon. What's your favorite piece? And what watch do you want to add to your collection next? Drop in the comments or come find me on Instagram. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.